All right, here we are. It is 11.52 a.m. on June 23rd, 2016. Here we are once again for ENGR 2301 Engineering Statics. So uh, I'm going to follow the same format as usual. going to go over some example problems or some old homework problems uh, from the Beer Vector Mechanics book on um, frames. And then we're going to move on to shear and bending diagrams for today. All right, so let's do that thing. All right, problem 6.75. Determine the force in member BD and the components of the reaction at C. So we have a simple frame here, and we define the forces in member um, the, on the force in member BD and the components of the reaction at C. All right, that's simple enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is to draw an exploded free body diagram. Again, we can break an object into its component pieces and find the uh, and construct individual sum of forces, the individual sum of, more, sum of moments for just the p one piece at a time, not the entire object, just one piece at a time. So let's look at this. I'm going to replace each of the member. I'm going to draw each of the members as line elements just for uh, simplicity's sake. So I have member BD here. BD, and the reaction force I'm going to have on this, I'll have DX and DY, BX and BY. Then the corresponding member will be member ABC. A, B, C. And we need to apply the loads. And when we create the internal forces here, we need to make sure to uh, include compatible um, reactions here. So I'm going to have this BY going down and this BX going to the left. Because uh, th these are going to be a pair of forces. They must be equal and opposite. Then we'll have a downward force here of 160 pounds. 160 pounds, and then we'll have our reaction at C, a CX and a CY. Now, I would like to just create, we, I, I would look, just looking at this, there are different things I could do. If I try to create a, a global free body diagram, or sorry, or a global sum of moments, treating the entire thing as one object, this will not work. If I consider the entire object, just one thing bumped together, I have this reaction, this reaction, this reaction, and this reaction. That is four reactions. That's four unknowns. I can't solve for any of. I can't solve for the reactions using um, the global uh, free body diagram. I have to use the local one. So I would call this a global free body diagram and these local free body diagrams. All right. Now, uh, even just looking at this piece, however, though, we have um, a bit of a problem. And that is that, just looking at this, we can see that we have four unknowns. So we need another piece of information. And we're going to solve this one very similar to the way we solved the one yesterday. And that is we realize that the x and y components of b um, are going to be applied at a ratio. They must be applied at a certain ratio. They're going to be either in tension or this is going to be in either tension or compression. And um, let's see here. So the relationship between these can be seen as follows. The relationship is going to be a um, just a simple uh, rectangular component relationship, a triangular relation relationship. And where this is coming from is that this is a pin pin member which means that ultimately the only force this can carry is an internal axial force. So this force and this force must have a vector sum that is a force along this axis. They must. 
So in other words, the vector, um, the magnitudes are going to be proportional to, ge to the geometry. So I could have bx here, by, and b. This triangle must be proportional to the actual physical triangle. which is 24 inches by 10 inches. So therefore, I can simply say bx over 24 equals by over 10. Or I could say bx equals 2.4 by. Um, it would be B, but I'm not really too concerned about that. I'm just going to keep it as BX and BY. In this case, we don't actually need to solve for the hypotenuse if we don't want to. Okay, so BX is 2.4 BY. And then I can say, let me take a sum of moments about point C on this object here. Sum of moments about point C on this object here. Uh, let me call this object, let me call this member 1 and this member 2, and then I'll indicate this by saying sum of moments 2 um, about point C. This would mean the sum of moments on object 2 about point C. And what's really powerful about this is that suddenly this makes things a lot simpler. See, BY is going to generate a moment here about C, but CY, CX, and BX, none of them will generate moments about that point. So I can simply say, um, Let's see, negative, or actually positive by times the moment arm length of 16 inches um, plus 160 pounds times a moment arm length of 30 inches equals zero. So by, therefore, is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, um, well, it's going to be negative 60 times 30 over 16, and uh, that comes to uh, negative 300 pounds. Negative 300 pounds. Questions on how I got that? Okay. Um, how I got the moments. Okay, I'm summing moments of this piece only, member two. You need to, uh, okay, I know this is difficult to grasp, but you need to get in the thought pattern of recognizing frameworks as in a bunch of individual objects combined together. So we are not creating a free body diagram of the entire thing. We are not creating a free body, we're not summing moments about this piece. In this step, we are just summing moments about, we're just summing forces and moments on this piece here. As far as this step is concerned, nothing else in the universe besides this bar exists. So I don't care what forces are applied up here. They are not, they don't matter. All that matters is this member here. Yes? So in a, in a sense, you saw that you had four unknowns, and then you, you, you saw the ratio, so that added up one equation. The question was yes. We had three unknowns, and we noticed that we had a uh, the pin pin member gave us a fourth a fourth um, a fourth equation, and now we'll be able to solve for everything. Yes, yes. Um, so on the diagram you drew uh, for A A B C, you drew uh, B Y going down. Mm -hmm. Since you got a negative answer, that means that B Y would actually be going up. Yes, in reality B Y is actually going to be going up. So if on the so on the test would we 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 be okay with writing negative three hundred or would we uh, write? You just need to be consistent with your own free body diagrams. Exactly, yes. So you need to draw them as equal and opposite, always. Okay, now I can simply get bx using this equation here. bx is going to be 2.4 by, or 2.4 times negative 300.
and this will be equal to negative 720 pounds. So it's actually going uh, to the, this is actually going to be going to the right. I could actually say BX equals 720 pounds to the right and BY equals 300 pounds upward. And that really does make better sense when you think about it, because if you imagine this member here, if, if you consider this member and this force here, uh, imagine applying a large 160 pound force to this. This thing is just a pin. I need something to hold that up. I need something to hold this member up. That's what this, that's what this diagonal is doing. And so this diagonal really must be applying an upward force to um, the member ABC at point B. All right, there's that. Now I simply just need to do a sum of forces on object two in the x direction. And I'm going to have um, negative BX plus CX equals zero. So BX equals CX equals, um, let's say negative 720. Or CX equals 720 pounds to the left. Notice what I did. I wrote my equation just, I wrote my equation completely ignoring the numbers that I had already gotten over here. I simply uh, took my diagram as face value, at face value. I like to do that. I like to set up all my equations just based off of this diagram, and then if I get a negative number, plug them back in. I find that that really helps avoid uh, mistakes. Yes. Okay. And then finally, some forces in object two on the y direction, or on object two in the y direction, we're going to have negative 160 minus by plus cy equals zero. cy will equal 160 plus by. CY equals 160 um, minus 300 equals negative 140 or CY equals, um, on the drawing it's shown up, if it's negative that means it's actually down, CY equals 140 pounds downward. Like so, yes. Um, if you wish, it, there's different ways to do it because it's still it's ultimately the same force. If you want to give it a subscript, that's fine. If not, it's the same, really. Really, I think it doesn't really matter because um, if you say uh, cy is uh negative 140. What that's going to say is that on this object, it's going to be going, or sorry, if I say by is um, negative 100 or something like that, that means that this one is actually going up and it means this one is actually going down. It reverses both of them. Uh, no, like, just like here, I just, the question was, do, when I was, when I'm drawing the free body diagram, do, do the, does BX and B and CX have to go in opposite directions? No, and you'll notice on the diagonal member, I drew everything up and to the right. The only reason that I drew, um, this one as down and to the left was because it had to be compatible with this joint here. So, in general, I draw everything as up and to the right, unless I can't because of, uh, joint compatibility. Okay, other questions on this? Do we still need FBD? Oh, do we need FBD? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess, we, oh man, I, 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 I saw for the wrong member, didn't I? Oh, well. Um, let's see, so actually, if we look at this, well, we have BX and BY, so we, just, we, we can just do a sum of forces X, sum of forces Y in this thing now. The question was, uh, do I need the force dy, x and dy? And actually, yeah, we, we do, because that's what it's asking for. So um, sum of forces on object one in the x direction is going to be dx plus 
bx equals zero. So uh, I should erase that and put dx equals. So dx equals negative bx equals, um, let's see, if this is uh, negative 720, then dx will be positive 720 pounds is dx. And sum of forces on object one in the y direction will give us uh, dy plus by, uh, so this equals zero equals like that. And um, then from that, we can get that dy has to equal the, the negative of, of uh, by. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, positive 300 pounds, which means 300 pounds to upward. Yes. But isn't that the D1Y? So shouldn't be the opposite of D2Y? Um, let's see. Again, I set up my equations. The question was, shouldn't this be opposite of B1Y and this kind of stuff? Again, this is why we just set things. This is why we simply set up a very nice free body diagram and create our equations based upon that. Yes. You, that can be done. Yes, you can combine them into a single two, uh, a single force, and effectively that's what we did, just using a ratio here. I just like you explain. I just like personally like expressing things as x and y components. I find that makes it a lot easier to some moments, especially. Okay, so let us consider this. Determine the components of all forces acting on member ABD of the frame shown. So we're looking for ABD, all the forces on that thing. Mm. Mm. Good, good, good. Hey, look what I can do. This is good. I am going to be able, because this thing has only three reactions on it, I am going to be able to solve for the external reactions using treating the whole thing as a single rigid body. So the external reactions, dx, or sorry, derp, dy, dy, dx, and ex. Notice, I've, as I have drawn these, this is actually completely impossible, isn't it? See, this is actually completely impossible. As it's drawn, this thing is moving to the right, isn't it? But I really don't care. Again, because I'm incredibly lazy. I don't like to think. So I just say everything is up and to the right, unless joint compatibility requires otherwise. And then we'll have our 450-pound force here, 450-pound force there, and that will be it. So let's get the, um, let us get the, let's try to get these reactions. Let's try to get some reactions. All right, so how might we do this? I want to get some points on the board. So let's try, um, hmm, let's say sum of forces on the whole thing in the y direction. This will give us dy minus 300 minus 450 equals zero, and this leads us inexorable, inexorably to dy equals 750 pounds. Next, I am going to sum moments, and if I really wanted to be really particular, I could even put like maybe fgy or something showing some forces on the global. mg, uh, so maybe some moments on the global, oh, let's do about point e. The global thing is a bit unnecessary, but just for absolute clarity, I'll write that. Or maybe absolute unclarity. I don't know. One of those. Okay. Okay, the question is, how did I know that I didn't have to break it up? I will have to break it up after this. I just saw that I could get some easy points on the board because there are three external reactions. So I can solve for that using, um, using just a rigid body assumption for the entire object. Yes. Separate, 
Um, the question is just looking at this, how would we know this is a frame and not a truss? Well, it cle it definitely looks like this thing, that this member is continuous. It, it clearly is drawn that way. So, um, how, and it also it tells us that it's a frame. So that's, a, so that's, basically, that's basically it. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay. So some moments on the global about point E. I'm going to have, well, let's see, this force, this and this force are not going to generate moments about there because their lines of action both pass through point E. I'm going to have uh, 300 pounds, positive moment, times a distance of 12 feet, plus 450 pounds, times a distance of 4 feet, Uh, eight feet, not inches. You got to be really careful with that feet and inches. Uh, what's that? Wait, what is that old, um, that old '80s uh, mockumentary about that rock band? Uh, what, what is that? Final Tap. Yes, yes, yes. There's. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's. The, basically, there's this. It's this mockumentary about like this really over the top. Uh, 80s hair band or whatever, and um, during some, there's one famous scene where they're, um, they are supposed to have this enormous, ridiculous show uh, stage set. It's going to be this gigantic, like, um, this gigantic Stonehenge, uh, kind of made of wood or whatever, probably in the background, but on the diagram that the person wrote on the back of a napkin for the person, for the uh, carpenter or whatever to create, he marked it 14 inches instead of 14 feet. So they're sitting there playing their um, concert behind a 14 inch Stonehenge. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh boy. Um, okay. And then minus dx times a distance of 6 feet and this equals 0. And let me quickly solve for dx. 300 times 12 plus 450 times 4 divided by 6. And dx is equal to 900 pounds. Huh? dx equals 900 pounds. Like so. Mm-hmm. And then finally, sum of forces global in the x direction. I will have um, dx plus ex equals zero. And this will lead inexorably to that ex must be equal to negative 900 pounds. So we have all of our external reactions now. All right, so what else can we do? We want all the forces on member A, B, D, and we're actually doing pretty good. Huh? Uh, we didn't even need DX? Uh, not necessarily. We, we, may not actually, we may not actually need that one. I was just doing it because I wanted to. Okay. So let me show uh, a free body diagram of... A, B, D. A, B, D. I'm going to have A, X, a reaction between the um, members at the connection, A, Y. Let me just go ahead and put this as a, oh, I don't know as a single force, maybe just by. The reason I'm doing this is because I can see that this is a vertical member. It is a pin-pin member, which means the force must be directly along the member's axis, right? A single force. And since this isn't at an angle at all, it's going to be a pure vertical force. I could write it as a bx and a by, but we would quickly see that B, uh, x would be equal to zero. Does that kind of make sense? In fact, actually, you know, maybe I will show a bx on there. I'll just show that it's equal to zero. bx equals zero. And then we have dx is equal to 900 pounds. 
and dy equals 750 pounds. Like so. All right, um, let's see, what can we do here? So we need, um, basically, we need this one, this one, and this one. We have three unknowns. We can solve this. So let's start by doing, um, I'll just call this, for simplicity, one, two, and three. We won't need two and three, but we have them if we, um, just for, la for labeling's sake. Sum of forces on object one in the x direction. I would say this is ax plus bx, which is equal to zero, plus dx is equal to zero, and ax equals negative dx equals negative 900 pounds. All right, so now we, hit, we need to find this and this. What is the most effective way to do that? I think the most effective way to do that, um, maybe I'll sum moments about point A. Uh, sum moments about point A on object two, or sorry, object one. Be con I'll try to be consistent with my notation. Sum moments on object one about point A. This is going to be, let's see, neither of these will generate a moment there. But then I'll have um, by times the distance of 8 feet uh, plus dy. Yes? The hypotenuse of 8 and 3? No, because we're using the perpendicular distances. Yes. Okay. Uh, dy times a, uh, but never be afraid to ask, that's good, um, 16 feet, and then minus dx times a distance of uh, 6 feet equals 0. And then, let's see, so a, uh, so uh, let's see, by is the one we want. 8by um, plus, okay, dy is 750 times 8 uh, minus dx is 900. Huh? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Derp. 16 minus 9 times 16. Minus, uh, wait, that's a, nope, derp, something went wrong here. Okay, 70, 750 times 16 minus dx times 6. Okay, gotcha. Minus uh, 900 times 6 equals 0. And from this, I will get 750 times 16 minus 900 times 6 is um, 6,600. So 8by plus 6,600 equals 0. So by, therefore, is negative 8,825. By is negative 825 pounds. And then finally, I can do a sum of the forces on object one in the y direction. And I will get by plus dy plus ay equals zero. So ay, uh, ah, this is a dangerous place to draw. Ay equals, um, so it's going. That's going to be 825 um, 
minus 750 or positive 75 positive 75 pounds is a y um do you have to state whether compression or tension for re reactions no okay questions on this mess i know it's kind of scrunched there at the bottom sorry about that <laughs> okay Okay, the question was, looking at the, the free body diagram here, on the sum of moments of object one about point A, how did I know BY was positive? Well, BY has a tendency to rotate counterclockwise about point A. That's it. Will collinear forces cancel out? Oh, do you mean if will will their moments be zero? Yeah. Yes, of course. That's always that's true on everything. If you ever if at any time you have a um, oh you're talking about collinear members, okay? A collinear members, uh, not necessarily no, because uh, again that's all built on the truss assumption. So if you have yes, if you I had another pin pin member over here, and then it would be sort of a mini truss in there. That's that would apply. But again, that is a uh, the stuff we talked about of zero force members and things like that. That is for a um, that is for a uh, a truss assumption. Yeah, you're assuming a, tr a truss there. For example, if this member if we cut this member ABD into two pieces and join them here and this and ACE into two pieces and join them here with one pin connection then this would end up being a zero force member but um that's not going to work so all right other questions on this okay 6.101 for the frame and loading shown to determine the components of all forces acting on member ABD Wow, isn't that just lovely? Joy. Okay. So, you know the drill. Hey, look, I have uh, three reactions. I'm going to solve for the reactions first. So I have EX. I have AX. I have a Y. Like shown. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start by summing my once about A, because that's going to make my life a little bit easier. Does C have components? Again, um, what am I doing? When, I, when I'm drawing my forces on here, I'm showing the forces on the global free body diagram. Okay, so I am not concerned about what member forces are, are what uh, what forces are in this pin or in this pin or in this pin, because all that matters is the global are are, are the forces that are uh, external, the forces that are reacting with this entire frame um, to the outside. Think of it in terms of like a building and the forces on its foundation. We're not talking about the forces inside the columns and beams. We're talking about just the forces um, of like the external forces like wind or rain and the foundation or something like that. Those, that's how a building would work for external forces. Um, or for a person, if you talk about um, the ex the, your um, global free body diagram would give you just the forces in your feet, not the... Um, not say forces in your leg or something like that. Okay. So let us do a sum of moments global about point E. Or no, sorry, about point A. That's the force I'm trying to get, but it's point A, not E. About point A. And so again, the reason I chose, the, okay, why did I choose that point? Exactly, I eliminate two unknowns. That makes my life a whole lot simpler. So I'm going to then have EY is going to be a positive moment, or sorry, EX. EX times a distance of 12 feet 
then I just have these two forces to consider. Minus 360 pounds times a distance of 12 inches. Uh, wait. wait, you said 12 inches, right? This is 12 inches. And then times a distance of 15 inches. Oh, did I say feet? Oh, okay. Feet, inches, it's only off by a factor of 12. Same stuff, right? Okay. Minus 240 pounds. Oh, that's the last day of the week. 240 pounds times a distance of, let's see, that's 13, 15, uh, what is that? 33, you said? Yeah, that sounds about right. 33. 33 inches. And all of that equals zero. Why? Statics. Because it's a statics class, yes. <laughs> and from this, we will conclude that EX is equal to 360 times 15 plus 240 times 33 all over 12 is 1,110 pounds. Yes, positive. Now we don't actually need that force, but I don't know why I boxed it, just for fun, I guess. Um, sum of forces global in the x direction. I'm going to have ax plus ex equals 0. And that leads us to ex equals negative 1,110 pounds. Then the sum of forces global in the y direction is going to give us negative 360 minus 240 plus a y equals 0. And from this, we can conclude, let me just box my reactions, uh, a y equals 600 pounds. Questions on any of that? So I might actually go to the next page, just for space reasons. Huh? OK, I'll hold on a second. Uh, the second one? Oh, derp. Yeah, it should say AX, sorry. AX, EX, letters, same thing. Close enough for government work. Okay, you got that? Okay, y'all good? Okay, uh, so I'm just going to go and, oh, um, well, maybe not. Maybe I'll keep working here. Yes. The bent one. Uh, this is I would you could look at it different ways. We could treat this as a fixed connection, but there's really no great. Usually there's not a lot of great value to splitting them up. It's basically one member at that point. So we're looking for the forces in member A B D. Let's see how might we do that. Um, hmm. Need to think carefully about this. This is actually a little bit tricky, isn't it? Huh? I'm trying to find something that uh, ha would have only three unknowns, but I'm not seeing anything like that right now. Because this is going to have a BX and a BY. This is going to have a CX and a CY. DX and DY. Hmm. Uh, we don't necessarily know that, though, because these aren't pin-pin members. These aren't straight pin. There are no straight pin-pin members with no other members in between. We didn't have. We don't have that nice um, thing we did before, unfortunately. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Huh? Three member. There are three members here. Yes. Be whatever you call it. There's this one, this one, and this one. But three members. Let's see, what might we do? Um, 
Well, would you agree that if we got one of the forces on member ABD, we could get we could solve for the rest? Yes, if we if we get one of them, we can solve for the rest, right? So I'm going to use member CDE to get one of those forces. And then I'm just going to immediately abandon that member and not care about it anymore and leave it out in the cold. Um, so consider member CDE. Well, what forces exist on this? We have EX, which is 1,100 pounds, well, 1,110 pounds, 1,110 pounds. We have DX and DY. DY. And we have CX and CY, correct? Then I can simply do uh, sum of moments. Let me call this one member one, maybe like this one member one and this one member two. Yes. Yes, exactly. I'm just going. The question was, we don't care that there's more than four. That there's four unknowns, and in this case, uh, no. I mean, we could, we eventually could go back and probably find it, find the other ones. But um, combining members allows you to solve for more than four unknowns, and you'll see this. Um, member force on member one about point C. So some of moments on member one about point C. This is going to allow us to get D uh, to get uh, dx. Because this one, this one, and this one will not generate a moment there. So we'll have uh, dx times a distance of 12 inches plus ex times a distance of 24 inches, which leads us to that dx equals negative um, 2 ex or negative 2,200 and, how do I keep adding extraneous commas? Negative 2,220 pounds, like so. That's gonna be one of our answers, actually. Yes. Uh, A, B, D. Take the moments about D. And that, that will give us B, Y, yes. But we still would need some way to get the, the other X value. And that's what we'll have. Thankfully, we now have that option. Okay. So let's look at member, um, member A, B, D. A, B, D. And the force is on here. Well, we already have the AX and AY. And I know this one is going to be, you know what, I'm just going to draw it just like I did up there. Uh, AY, AX. Bx, By, and then observe here though, I must make my things compatible, my force is compatible. So this dx and dy went up and to the right, this one's going to go down and to the left. So dx and dy, and this is object two, member two. This is two. Sum of, uh, let's first do sum of forces on object two in the x direction. So this is actually one of our solutions here that we're really after. 
dx. I'm going to have negative dx plus bx plus ax equals 0. And bx will be equal to, um, let's see, it looks like dx minus ax, which, let's see, dx minus ax, ax is, uh, dx is negative 2,220 pounds, and ax is uh, negative 1,000, so that's going to be minus a negative 1,110 pounds. And all of this will mean that bx is equal to um, negative 1,110 pounds. OK. Then let's see. So we have that. Then let's see. So copy that down. Uh, let's see, sum of moments on object two. Let's do about point O, yeah, B, that would work. Wait, no, that, will that work? Yeah, B, huh, what's wrong? What's wrong? About object two, about point B. So I'm going to have just the two AY forces. So that's going to be po uh, negative AY. Both of these are going to be negative as drawn. So I know I'm going to jump back and forth here a bit. Negative AY times a distance of um, six inches. So I'm going to have to, sorry, I'm going to have to jump back and forth while I do this. Um, minus DY times a distance of 18 inches equals zero, and we know dy is, uh, well, let's see, oh, sorry, we know ay is equal to 600 pounds. So dy equals, uh, let's see, first let me just make both of these positive. dy is going to be equal to negative uh, 6ay over eight, uh, 18, which basically means negative ay over 3 which means negative 600 over 3, or negative 200 pounds. That's dy. And then finally, a sum of forces on object 2 in the y direction will give us, um, again, I'll come back, uh, uh, ay plus by minus dy minus dy equals 0. There's no other forces on there. Nope. Again, sorry for the jumping back and forth. By is going to be equal to dy minus ay, which is negative 200 minus 600, which is negative 800 pounds. Equals by and dy. And with that, we now have all of the reactions on member ABD. <sighs> Simple, right? Easy. Just. Yeah, if you can just eliminate something, or if you can get if you can get if you can get just one of something, it helps a lot. Okay. Other questions. All right. So I'm gonna keep that. Let me check something really quick. We're make sure we're good here. Yes, we are. Okay. So I'm gonna close this down, and we are now uh, ready to move on to shear and bending moment diagrams. What do you hear? You hear, you hear bad things about those. 
they're long. They're oh, that's no. That's not a good attitude. Okay. Well, I got some notes I'm going to use here. So, okay. Better add some more pages here. Uh, let me just adjust this really quick. I'm going to call this 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay, just in case I need more pages because we've got a lot of notes today. All right, so we're going to talk today about shear and bending moment diagrams. Now, the um, goals here are we want to be able to ex we want to be able to explain the relationship between um, load, shear, and bending moment. We want to um, learn how to draw shear and bending moment diagrams for given load conditions, and explain the meaning uh, and importance of shear and moment diagrams. Okay, so we have talked a bit about what shear and moment are. Shear is a force that is transverse to the axis of a member. And moment is a force that causes a member to uh, bend. First, let us talk about sign convention. Uh, shear and moment sign convention. When we talk about shear and moment, we're talking about internal forces inside members. The key to remember a sign convention is to not get yourself all uh, confused about, oh, it's up, it must be positive. Just because something is up does not mean something is positive. Okay, consider these two blocks here. This is the sign convention for shear and moment, as I will show you. So I'm going to have V for shear and M for moment. I'll show that this is positive and this is positive. Um, so if you have a shear force uh, uh, upward on the left side and downward on the right side, this is positive shear. And bending like this is positive moment. Where does the sign convention come from? Well, this comes from because uh, if you think about the type, if I have a beam, and I apply for twisting forces on it like this, on either ends. Well, it's going to bend in kind of a smiley face shape, right? So this is, this is the most common form of bending. It is referred to as positive bending. It is one you're most likely to encounter, although you can also have negative bending in many cases, especially for beams that cross multiple spans. But for a simply supported beam, you're going to pretty much normally have positive bending, but with normal gravity loads and things like that. So um, how to explain this? This, again, so it's easy to see where we get positive moment, because that's just how um, we could define something bending upward as positive, and in that turn, we would have the arrows going the other way. But we call something bending downward positive moment. So our sign convention for moment is like this. And shear, this comes directly from here. It, when we, you, uh, we will see with the method of sections that shear forces um, like this correspond to a positive bending moment condition. All right, there are three methods for determining uh, V and M diagrams. Uh, of developing V and M diagrams. There's the, there is uh, the method of sections. There is integration. And 
and there is uh, the method of inspection, just by inspection. And we'll, if we have time, we'll learn about each of these. Yes. Uh, yes, the method of sections is the same as the method of cuts, sometimes referred to as that. Yes. Okay. So that's the basic idea. Uh, we'll get at it, write that down, and we'll move on. First one, the first one we're going to talk about is the method of sections. <sighs> Got it? Okay. So, what, no? Okay. Okay. Uh, method of sections. I will demonstrate this by an example. So again, we realize that a member can have um, inside it shear and moment. A member can have inside of it shear, moment, and axial force. Now consider this here. Consider a member like this, a simply supported beam. All right, uh, I don't think I've, have I explained what simply supported means yet? Or have I described that yet? I guess not. Okay. Simply supported. We refer to a beam as simply supported if it has a pin on one end and a roller on the other. We refer to that simply because that is the simplest case of beam support that will result in a statically determinate and stable um, beam. Okay, so consider this beam like shown. Say I have points uh, A C and B are members, uh, this thing goes from A to B, and I'm interested in the moment and shear at point C. And let me show some forces on here. Um, I'm going to have a 10 kip point load at some point here. I want to find the shear, basically I have a, sh a 10, I'm given this essentially. I am given that there is a, uh, oh, and I'm also given the dimensions. I'm given that the dimensions are like this. Four feet, three feet, and five feet. And five feet. So given this, find the V and M at C. VC, MC. Again, V is shear, M is moment. There is going to be a V and M at a certain V and M at C, and we can calculate that using a simple method of sections or a method of cuts. You can describe it as that. Basically, we're just going to cut the number. Okay, so the first step will be to uh, find my reaction forces. Reaction forces, we're very familiar with this, AX and AY and BY. And let's, let's calculate those. My reactions Well, let's see. So from a sum of forces in the x direction equals zero, we get that AX is equal to zero kips. From a, so we take a sum of moments about A and we get a uh, negative four feet times 10 kips plus 12 feet or sorry, yeah, 12 feet plus by, or times by. Times by is equal to zero. And from this, we can get that by is equal to 3.33 kips upward. So again, the reactions are only the first step. And then sum of forces in the y direction, we will get a y minus 10 kips 
plus 3.33 kips uh, equals 0. And from this, we will get that Ay is equal to 6.67 kips upward. Any questions on this? Again, this is just basic uh, um, rigid body equilibria to find the uh, reactions. Now, after this, we are going to take a cut at C. So, just like we did in trusses, when we cut it, we found that there was an inter there were uh, hidden forces there that we needed to apply a force there to keep it in equilibrium. We need to do the same thing here. In a truss, when you cut it, there will only be an axial force to keep it in equilibrium because it's a truss member with pins on both ends. But regular members, uh, your typical members, have shear, moment, and axial force. So when you cut them, you have to draw three unknowns for every cut in the middle of a member. Let me show you that. So I will cut it at A. Cut at A, or sorry, at C. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram of the member cut at C and show the forces that result from this. I'm going to have my 6.67 kips. I'm going to have VC. I'm going to have my axial force, which I will refer to as NC for a normal and MC, the moment at C. So look, when we cut the member, we produce three unknowns. When we cut a member, we produce three unknowns. There is going to be a shear force, which is perpendicular to the member, a normal force or an axial force that is along the member, and a moment, which is just a moment. Now, uh, how did I know which way to draw these things? Why did I choose to draw the moment clockwise? Why did I choose to draw the shear arrow down? Exactly. See, look at this. See here, I'll go back. See here, on the right side of positive shear, there's a downward uh, force. See, I'm assuming that this piece is in downward, I'm assuming this is in positive bending, and I'm assuming it has positive shear. So, um, there you have it. I chose this I chose these directions simply based off of positive sign convention. And you notice the same convention we had pre previously in um, trusses is still applied to the axial force. It's still assuming tension positive, etc. Yes. So if you were doing this at the cut on the B side, it would be out. Yes, if there was a cut on the other side, if I had say a if I was taking a cut um, of say yeah, actually let me you know what, let me show you that. The question was, if I was doing the opposite side, it would be opposite. And yeah, let me show you that. I'll draw that out. Four feet, so three feet. See, there's actually a, we're not going to need to use this to find the, uh, the forces here. But there is a corresponding one over here. which is a, um, this would be five feet long, and I would have my BY, which is 3.33 kips. I would have the same NC, but in the opposite direction. I would have a shear arrow going upward, and I would have a M arrow going this way, rotating clockwise, to be compatible with this one over here. So this would still show positive sign convention over here. So if you draw them um, on the left, they're going to be going one way. If you draw them on the right, they're going the other way. It's, again, the sign convention of shear and moment <coughs> is not simply, oh, it's up, it's positive. That's not how this works. Yes? So before when you were talking about like, the reaction convention, you, you said that if it was like this, it had a moment and it's a, yes, the question is, is this similar to the fixed connections? Yes. A member can be thought of as a an infinite series of infinitely thin members joined together with fixed connections. 
Okay, so there we have it. Um, let's see. So now um, I'm going to work, keep working through this. You got this? Okay. Um, let's keep working through it. There's a, there's a reason I gave myself a lot of slides because we got a lot to go through today. Um, today the theory and the examples are kind of all combined together. I have a for shear and bending moment diagrams, I have a, a custom set of notes I like to work through um, that, are, that are more prepared out than most of my lectures tend to be delivered more extemporaneously on certain topics, but this stuff I like to give with a prepared set of notes. Okay. So I'll do a sum of forces in the y direction equals zero. And this leads to 6.67 kips minus 10 kips minus VC equals zero. And from this, I will get that VC is equal to negative 3.33 kips. So this was created, if you reference your notes to the previous slide, you'll see that this was created simply by applying a sum of moments to the uh, left portion of that free body diagram. Then sum of moments about point C is equal to zero. Therefore, I will get, uh, if we apply this, negative seven feet times 6.67 kips um, plus three feet times 10 kips plus MC equals zero. And this leads us to that MC is equal to 16.69 kip feet. Notice negative shear with positive moment. You can have negative shear with positive moment. You can have positive shear with negative moment. You can have negative and negative. You can have positive and positive. They uh, do not necessarily directly interact like that. And um, from that, the reason for that is that um, well, you'll see eventually. We'll eventually we will learn the derivative relationship between shear and moment. Yes. Why am I taking the moment about? Oh, see, let's again. This is why am I including MC? Because again, this is a couple. It doesn't matter where I apply it. I still need to consider it. MC is a couple. It's a pure moment. Um, on your exam, a lot of people, uh, when I asked people what, what a couple was, some people said, a lot of people said, oh, it's a pair of forces in the same direction, but they all, everybody missed the second half of the question, which was, what is the significance of it? A few people got it, but the, the significance of a couple is that it's a free moment. It doesn't matter where you sum moments, you simply add that uh, number of uh, kip inches or whatever to cause to the rotation equation. So um, it is a free moment. It, it, it'll generate the same moment about any point. That's a special thing about couples. A, um, when you have a moment like that drawn on a free body diagram, just a, just a moment applied to a member, you always have to add that. It doesn't matter if I'm summing moments here, here, way over here. I'm always just going to slap on a plus MC. This one would be, if I took moments about here, this would be minus MC. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let's summarize this. Summarize results from this demonstration. Um, huh? Yes. Um, we could calculate the normal, but it's clearly zero. There's no horizontal forces, uh, so it's clearly zero, yes. Okay. So we're going to have, um, actually, let me do this in blue. Let me do this a little bit differently. Use more colors. So I'm going to have one block for MC and one block for VC. say VC and MC and here 
and um, these will be correspondingly opposite. These these that correspond to each other. 3.33 kips, 3.33 kips. What this is saying is, uh, don't be. Uh, when I draw, I draw this as a block, but really this is more more like a differential element. Remember in calculus where you'd have a tiny little dx? That's what this is. These blocks are basically just differential elements. So you might be surprised to say, wait, why wouldn't we have another force over here instead of the 3.33? Well, that's because this is a differential element. It's a tiny piece. A tiny, tiny, tiny piece would have shear like this. Okay. And then, so again, this would be 16.69 kip feet. And this one would be negative, and this one would be positive. All right. Okay. All right, well, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll look at how to develop shear and moment functions. Mm-hmm.